Hello and welcome, my name is John Harding and in this video I'm going to provide a brief introduction to benthic invertebrates. So in this video I'm going to cover what are benthic invertebrates, why are they of interest to us, what's the brief life cycle, condensed version of the life cycle, and what are some of the common types of benthic invertebrates. What are benthic invertebrates? Well, these are animals that don't have backbones. They have no vertebrae. Uh, they're generally small and they range only from about a millimetre in size up to several centimetres. They include things like insects, and snails, worms, and crustacea and a whole bunch of other types of very small animals. Um, they're often called macroinvertebrates. Macro means large and macroinvertebrate is generally an animal that's greater than 0.5 of a millimetre or 500 microns. So they can be really small and sometimes you can't see them almost with the naked eye and then sometimes they're quite large insects. Uh, benthic invertebrates are commonly found in streams, rivers, ponds and lakes and in fact just about any type of waterway will have some sort of benthic invertebrates. They're often very abundant and in fact they can be among the most abundant animals in these systems and in fact you can even find them in quite polluted waters will still have benthic invertebrates probably alive in them. Benthic invertebrates are particularly interesting to us because firstly they're used as indicators of the health of our waterways so quite commonly you will find different types of invertebrates are sensitive to pollution and so their presence or absence can tell us quite a bit about the condition of this waterway. They also play a really important role in the food web in streams and lakes. They eat things like bacteria, fungi, algae, in some cases uh, other larger plants and they also uh, can feed off decomposing organic matter like leaves and twigs that fall into our streams and rivers while they themselves are eaten by large organisms like fish and eels and crayfish and some birds. So in that respect, benthic invertebrates are a really important part of the whole food chain of a healthy uh, waterway. So we should talk a little bit about the brief life cycle of benthic invertebrates. Most benthic invertebrates we see in rivers and lakes are juveniles, or maybe more correctly we might call them larvae or nymphs. I'm not going to go into the technical details there but um, they are basically the young and uh, the adults often don't live in the water. The adults often might emerge and this is especially the case in insects which have developed wings and so the final adult emerges out of the water and flies away. Larvae or nymphs can live up to a year or more as juveniles in the water and some benthic invertebrates have a pupal phase so they metamorphize, they change from the larvae to the adult. This is a, the similar to what you see with uh, moths and other sort of um, insects probably that a lot of people are familiar with. There are many, many types of benthic invertebrates and in this video I'm not going to try and cover all of that. I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, the very common ones. In particular, we might start with mayflies, which are often found in streams and rivers and they're quite useful to us because they're very sensitive to pollution. Mayflies are, the adults of mayflies are the animals that, that uh, people often, anglers, tie their flies to go fly fishing. Uh, one of the other types of groups are stoneflies, which are often found in very cooler waters. So we might find stoneflies in forested streams or in mountains and rivers. They, in New Zealand, they don't occur very often in lakes, although in some lakes we do get stoneflies. Uh, Caddisflies are another group, and they have a pupil phase, so they go through a pupate, pupation. And some caddisflies can build cases, stony cases, which also uh, might be made of wood and leaves. And where the, whereas some species of caddisflies are actually free living and they don't build cases at all. There are lots and lots of species of flies, probably thousands of species of flies that have juveniles, 
what we know as maggots, uh, that live in fresh waters. Uh, one of the examples um, I've shown here in this uh, diagram is, is a sandfly larvae that many Kiwis will be familiar with. The larvae actually feed on small particles in the water column. Well, thanks for watching this introductory YouTube. I hope you found it useful. And watch out for further YouTubes describing how benthic invertebrates might be identified and how else we may use them.